Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. This series is all about the basics. If you're a beginner or have found painting with watercolours challenging, then please join in as these videos are for you. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. Also, if you have any questions or requests, please leave them in the comment section below. I read them all. Enjoy your painting. Hi. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the various marks you can reduce with a round watercolour brush and textured watercolour paper. I'm also going to clear up some common misconceptions uh, beginner watercolour artists uh, often pick up when they first start. Let's begin. The first subject we're going to have a look at is um, creating a, what we call wet on wet effects. First thing I'm going to do is mix some paint and, um, and for this I'm just going to add some of the blue, which is Windsor Blue Red Shade, and a little bit of the Permanent Rose. Now the first thing you can you notice when you f start adding paint to your water, and it's, it's quite sloshy. Now with and a lot of people when they first start, they don't mix paints to any different consistency that than this. However, if you do that, you severely limit the range of uh, tones or the relative lightness and darkness of colours that you can produce with watercolour. For instance, if I pick up some of this mixture, put it in this part of the palette, and now without adding any more water, just adding more paint, you can see that it starts to flow uh, much less than what it did over here and this will allow me to create different marks when I'm painting. So here this is quite a bit more sloshy and if we take a piece of paper and test this colour and the way you do that is you pick up some of this paint and then press and drag the brush across and this gives you a closer idea to what the actual colour is you're mixing. If you just pick up a load of paint and do this, see how much darker it looks. The real technique is to press and drag it across and that is more real. When you, when you look in the palette, the paints obviously, are, they do look much darker, but that's because of the, the depth of the paint. It's a bit like when you look in the ocean, it looks very, very blue, but if you pick up a glass of water, of salt water, you know, sea water, it doesn't look that blue at all. It's the depth that it give, helps give you that colour. Now with the second mixture here, you can see because I added all that extra paint, it's reading quite a bit darker than this first mixture. When I'm, when I'm painting, I always pre-test all my initial starting colours and that makes it very easy for me to uh, start painting and make small adjustments without having to go back and try and uh, make the bigger adjustments which can lose you time and all the while your painting is drying. The other thing when I'm using, when I'm testing my colours, I always test it on the same type of paper that I'm painting on because um, that, that way if there's any colour differences, they're negated by testing on the same type. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up another brush to transfer some water. It'll save me cleaning the brush and wasting some paint in my uh, container. And I'm going to run couple of lines of water down the paper like that and I've created a, a strip that's 
approximately um, two inches wide. And then about an inch from the top, I'm gonna to quickly put a mark and, um, and run that across the paper. Now, if you have a close look at this, you can see the lovely effect that the watercolour paint and the water are creating. While I'm talking, the painting effectively is painting itself. It's continuing to move and develop. And depending on the types of paint you use, uh, you can also get some of the colours separating because some watercolour paints are more particle based and others are more dye based. In this case, uh, the blue and the red are similar, so they're both uh, moving through our painting at the same rate. Um, in more advanced classes, we will be looking at um, you know, different types of paints and how they re react to the water. The other thing to notice, because I put this, uh, um, I, I painted this line while uh, the surface of the paper was very wet, um, most of the paint has flowed down here. A small amount actually travelled across the surface of the paper before settling back into the paper. But here you can see how, because there was still more water up here you know, above the line travelling down, it's, it's created this um, V shape where the clean water here has kept the paint moving down the paper and, um, and also modified the mixture at this point. These are just things to observe and be aware of um, them happening because, um, uh, and, and this is what sort of gives watercolour its life sometimes. You, you look at a painting, you put the brush down, come back five minutes later and notice that it's changed and, and it's because of effects like this that it changes. Now if I tilt this you can see how it's still quite shiny here but it's lost some of that shine up here. That's because the water has continued to flow and in a situation like this, the paper is always going to be drier up here and wetter down here. It's like a waterfall, right? So the water leaves from here and ends up here. But because there's no additional water being added, this area will dry quicker than this area down here. Now, because this is quite wet, if I pick up some more of this uh, thicker paint and I put a mark here, it's creating a particular effect. And if I do the same here and then maybe here, okay. So again, this is, this is the beauty of watercolour. With one brush stroke, look at the beautiful um, shapes we've created. Here, the paint has flowed up and down, and that, that is partly because the, this, these particular pigments um, um, travel along the surface of the water, but also because there is um, less moisture on the paper than there is on the brush, and the paint is being sucked up um, to a greater extent than it was up here. And then it's following the, the textures of the paper and you could, you could sort of see if I was painting this and I wanted to create an image of a, a lake with um, trees and the reflection, one brush stroke created that. Here the edge is a little bit sharper because this area was drier than this. Um, here there was still a bit of extra moisture because of the cockling of the paper some of the moisture stayed up there, and we, but we're getting a more furry shape rather than uh, this more um, spindly shape down here. If we wait even longer, this we will start getting sharper and sharper edges, okay? Um, these are effects that we call wet on wet, um, but later I'll show you that it doesn't mean you have to pre-wet the paper because if I go back in and create a, a mark or in painting into the paint, you can see I'm now getting uh, marks 
that are created by the wetness, the pre-wetness of the paper which is wet with the paint. Anyway, I'll, I'll explain that in more detail in a minute. The main thing is to be aware that these marks are produced through a combination of the paint consistency in our palette, the amount of paint in our brush, and the wetness of the paper, and the texture of the paper. So we'll call that number one, and that's normally what we're talking about wet on wet. But between that initial mark and a mark that I can put on this when the paper is just about totally dry, there's an infinite range of edges, right? Which is why observation is so important when you're painting with watercolour. You have to, you're always looking at what's the paint consistency, how wet's the paper, how much paint do I have in my brush, um, uh, the angle I'm holding the brush, all of these things in time you develop a skill with so that you get a better idea of um, what mark you can produce based on the wetness of the paper and the other considerations. Okay, so that this is what we call wet on wet. We go into the slightly lighter mixture and here we paint very quickly to what we call a flat wash. It's a very uniform wash and we, we paint it directly onto dry paper. So this is what we call wet on dry. However, if we want to create these effects, we've now effectively wet the paper with the paint. So if I go in and I'll just pick up, say, some, some of the yellow, which is going to look a little bit green because I had some blue left on my, my brush. And if I put a mark there, now we're creating a wet on wet effect like we had created there, okay? So you don't necessarily have to pre-wet your paper if, uh, to be able to create these effects because as soon as you start painting, you've effectively wet the paper. If you then go into that area that you've painted with another, another color or some more paint, now you're creating wet on wet effects right all right so I'll just get rid of that green so let us mark this so this is wet on wet this is wet on dry but remember this area here is wet on wet okay now if I pick up some more of this paint and I'll just drag the brush through the edge of my palette, uh, the, the edge of the paint well. And then if I come over here and hold the brush to the side, see, see how I'm holding the brush now, and I just move it across the paper. Here, because the tip of the brush was touching the paper, I get a sharp edge and then this the bulb part of the paper was touching here, I get more of a broken edge. This type of edge, number three, is what we call dry brush. But it does not necessarily mean that it was a dry brush. I can pick up um, what I call a fully loaded brush, which is a brush that's ready to, to drip, and I can still create that effect. The difference is, if I have a lot of paint in my brush, I have to move it much quicker over the surface of the paper to create the dry brush effect. If I take out most of the paint, I can then move it much slower and still create the same effect. So again, it's back to being aware of what's happening in the brush in terms of paint consistency and, and, um, and paint quantity and the texture of the paper. All of these edges are quite valid it just depends on what you want to create. In this case, because I, I didn't, I didn't um, 
run the point of the brush on the paper. I just used this part of the brush like that. Oops. I'm getting a broken edge on each, uh, each end. If I was doing a, um, an ocean scene and I wanted to paint the horizon very quickly and some white foam, I could use that brush stroke. If I wanted to create texture on walls and that, I might use this brush stroke. But there is a, a very large range of um, possible um, uh, subjects you can paint using a dry brush stroke. Now, there's another one, another brush stroke that I, I refer to as like a modified dry brush. It's really the same, same thing, except instead of drawing horizontal or vertical dry brush strokes, I hold the brush almost parallel to the paper and and just using the texture of the paper and I can use that to paint foliage. Um, I could even use it to, to, to create clouds and, and I can modify them with water um, or bushes running along the ground. Maybe give them a little shadow. And in this case, I'm not actually using the tip of the brush, I'm just using the bulb of the brush and barely touching the paper. And the, the, for this technique, I'll, I start by moving the brush and then slowly lowering it. And then just as it touches, I lift the brush a fraction, right? And you can just see these few hairs, they're the ones creating that texture. See how they're sticking out? They're the ones creating that texture. So, um, so I call this modified dry brush, but really it's the same as, it is still a dry brush, but I'll dry brush. Great. And, and all of these marks are what we use when we're painting and, and they're part of the language of watercolor, right? Uh, sharp edges tend to draw the eye um, like a, they're like a, a definite statement. Look at me, here I am. Wet on wet is, is a lot more nebulous and um, because you have subtle transitions. Dry brush is, is somewhere in between. It's a bit of a statement, not totally definite like wet on, uh, wet on dry, but um, but not as nebulous as some of the wet on wet effects we create. So they're the key brush marks we use. Just a few other points to cover before I leave this subject. When I'm holding the brush, if I'm painting with detail, I'm up close to the ferrule, um, quick brush strokes, uh, I'll hold the brush um, further back when I'm creating uh, this type of effect here, I hold the brush almost parallel to the paper. If I'm drawing vertical lines, I'm holding the brush this way. Each time I'm changing how I hold the brush and the angle of the brush relative to the paper. So that's important. A lot of people when they first start out, hold the brush like this, and it's almost like, you know, they're scared to move their fingers and all their painting is done by holding the brush in exactly the same way. If you do that, you, you limit the range of marks you can, brush, you can produce to a great extent. So that's it for this exercise. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you do like the video and you want to find out when the next um, Absolute Beginners video comes out, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be sent a message when it's available. Enjoy your day.